and welcome to St Mary's in Bruton. In this service, the special prayer, the collect for today, focuses on the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. And the opening tune you heard is one we used to, uh, for a hymn about living out the faith that the Bible teaches. It's really a prayer in three verses, and the first verse asks God to help us to learn the truths that the Bible imparts. The second verse asks for help to live out those truths. And the third and last verse asks, help us, O Lord, to teach the beauty of thy ways, that yearning souls may find the Christ and sing aloud his praise. We're not allowed to sing, but yearning souls still seek the Christ. So join me now as we prepare to meet the Lord in the breaking of the bread. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Remembering our failures in living by trust in God and in loving our neighbour, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. today's collect. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest, he said to him. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law 
and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus called him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That Gospel reading for today comes from the end of St. Matthew's Gospel, where opposition to Jesus is reaching its inevitable climax. It is worth remembering that the Pharisees believed that they were standing up for their beliefs against destruction by an, an upstart teacher of wild notions. He was undermining all that they believed to be true and right. And yet, the answers that Jesus gives mark him out as an orthodox Jew. The question about the greatest commandment follows on from other questions they've been asking him about paying taxes to Caesar and of the resurrection. As before, Jesus confounds his critics with his deep knowledge of the scripture and his irrefutable logic. He quotes their most basic and widely recited Bible passage from Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And unwilling to leave it at that, Jesus adds another scripture from, Levit from Leviticus this time. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. These two, together, summarise all that Jesus stood for. In quoting these two, Jesus is pointing out that the aim of the Jewish law is to focus one's entire life toward God. And you cannot love God if you do not love what God loves. We can't claim to love God while we oppress or exclude any of God's creatures, even our enemies, or people who disagree with us, or people who upset us, who see things differently from us. No matter how obtuse they may seem, God still loves them, and so must we. The scribes and Pharisees used the law to limit the number of people they were obliged to recognize as their neighbors. Jesus opens out all boundaries of neighborliness. He taught that our neighbor is anyone in need, even our enemy. His kind of love knows no barriers of skin colour or tribal boundary. This love gives rather than takes, forgives rather than condemns, includes rather than pushes out. And it's this love that is ultimately taken out and crucified by the nails of people who fear its sheer inclusiveness. But this love 
is stronger than death and lives on in souls and hearts and bodies and minds, enabling us to follow that great commandment. To love God with all your heart, soul and mind and your neighbour as yourself. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. And so we lay before you our concerns, recognizing our anxieties, the anxieties of those around us, the uncertainties, the frustrations of the limitations placed upon us. And we pray for those deciding future arrangements to limit the spread of this virus. And we pray that the Church may always proclaim the Gospel entrusted to her in the Scriptures. May we together fulfil all the works of the commandment of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw the nations closer to the sharing of love that overcomes all differences. Hasten the days of peace. Strengthen the world's peace makers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, in love and gentleness, may we be ministers of your grace to all those with whom we share our lives. Help us to live together as true neighbours of one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for all who have been led astray and harmed by false teaching. Forgive their errors, free them from the power of evil, or addiction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up the faithful departed into the perfect love which they began to understand in this world. Have mercy on those who did not understand and grant them all the joy and fellowship they could not find. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Peace. Delight in the Lord, in his love, and in his light, proclaim his peace by day and by night. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed upon the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. In spirit, may you too receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in remembrance that he died for you and lives for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. God of all grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining me. It's, it's good we can share this time together. We close with the tune called Moscow. And the words we sing to it begin, Thou whose almighty word chaos and darkness heard. Verse 1 is about God the Father calling the creation into being. Verse 2 opens with, Thou who didst come to bring on thy redeeming wing. It's about God the Son. Then comes a verse about the spirit of truth and love. God the Holy Spirit. And finally, we sing of the Holy and Blessed Three, glorious Trinity. And each verse ends strongly with, let there be light. So may the light of the glorious Trinity shine upon you, scatter all darkness from before your path and strengthen you in living out his word and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love 
and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.